Russians increase number of attacks on Ukrainian positions with old Ziguli vehicles and motorcycles. The full-scale war in Ukraine continues and on part of the front, Russia prefers to carry out assaults with small infantry groups using FPV drones and artillery. This situation has developed in the defense area of the Rubez Brigade of the National Guard of Ukraine, its planning section officer Major Dmitry Gozubenko said on air at the telethon. According to him, the enemies are also using Ziguli, buggies, ATVs and motorcycles. So Russian army increases number of attacks on Ukrainian positions with old Ziguli vehicles and motorcycles. The enemy has not been using exotic means of transportation for quite a long time, plus or minus two to three months, shared the defender of the country. According to Forbes, the theory is that soldiers on fast moving dirt bikes, motorcycles might outtrace the thousands of tiny Ukrainian drones that swarm over the front line every day of Russia's 28 month wider war on Ukraine. Sometimes it works. While Russia's northern offensive, which kicked off on May the 9th, quickly ground to a halt in the town of Vovchansk, a few miles south of the Russia-Ukraine border, the nearly 500,000 person Russian force in Ukraine has managed to advance a few miles in a couple of sectors in recent weeks. Usually, however, the bike assaults don't work a result that wouldn't surprise the various European armies that experimented with assault motorcycles during and right after World War I. And sometimes the bike assaults turn into bloodbaths for the Russians. On June the 28th, a large group of assault bikers, dozens it seems, attacked the Ukrainian army's 72nd mechanized brigade in Volodar in southern Ukraine. According to Russian correspondent Alexander Sladkov, the goal was to get around the Ukrainian position in order to cut it off. A blow to the Ukrainians in the back, or rather from the rear, is brewing there. Sladkov wrote, before the attack. It wasn't to be. The Ukrainians struck the Russian column, which also included T-80 tanks and other armored vehicles, with drones and, it seems, missiles and artillery. Buried mines may have added to the destruction. When the smoke cleared, the Russian force was in ruins. The 72nd Mechanized Brigade claimed it knocked out 16 tanks, 34 fighting vehicles and 19 bikes and killed or badly wounded more than 800 Russian troops. Russian commanders deliberately threw manpower under the Ukrainian combine of death without any chance of survival, Ukrainian war correspondent Yuri Butasov reported. In July, the chief of staff of the operational battalion of the 13th National Guard Brigade Charter, with the call sign Pharaoh, shared that during the assaults in the region, the occupiers moved around, including on a motorized tractor. NATO needs additional 35 to 50 brigades to implement its new plan to defend itself against Russian attacks, Reuters has reported with reference to an unnamed military source. According to the source, creating up to 50 brigades is quite challenging, considering the fact that a brigade consists of 3,000 to 7,000 soldiers. It is unclear from where NATO allies might draw the additional personnel for 35 to 50 brigades. NATO's new defense plan is the alliance's first major defense plan in the past 30 years, with officials trying to translate the agreement into concrete military demands. NATO leaders are expected to make new decisions in Washington this week, at a summit to mark the 75th anniversary of the Transatlantic Security Alliance. Commenting on the defense plant, a NATO representative said that the alliance's military planners had identified detailed requirements for troops and weapons needed for the defense of the alliance. Air and anti-missile defense, long-range weapons, logistics, as well as large-scale ground military formations are among our main priorities. As we develop the forces and capabilities that can implement our plans and respond to the threats we face, NATO will set even greater goals for its allies. We are confident that our deterrence is and will remain strong the NATO official said.